Good morning and welcome to this week's Your Soul Matters broadcast. The Your Soul Matters broadcast is a ministry of the House of Deliverance Church. I'm your host, Tatiana Cody. It is our hope that this broadcast and the message you're about to hear will inspire you, encourage you, and convince you that your soul truly does matter. It matters to God, it matters to us here at the House of Deliverance Church, and we hope that it matters to you. Let's welcome our speaker this morning, Elder Brad James. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Let us get started. I want to start off by reading a passage of scripture from a letter by Paul written to the church at Corinth. It comes from the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 13. I'm going to read verses 1 through 3, and then I'm going to skip down through 9 through 11. I'll be reading from the King James Version. And it reads, Though I speak with the tongues of men, and of angels, and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profit me nothing. Read down to verse 9. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now this is traditionally known as the love chapter. This is the verse that people always hear when it talks about weddings, when we talk about love as, as faithful, love as kind, all those different things. I want to focus more on this childish aspect that Paul is speaking of here. My subject today will be help the children. Amen. Now there's a scripture in the book of Matthew also, chapter number 18, one through three that reads, at the same time, the disciples came unto Jesus saying, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. We read this and we talk about this and we look at the aspect of the child's heart. People talk about, you know, you have this childlike mentality, this trusting nature, this kind spirit. But I want to look at it a little bit differently. I know eternal life is available to everyone. And when Jesus said, suffer the little children and forbid them not to come to me, to me, he was talking about the status of the child. Mm -hmm. These children that were coming to Jesus were being blessed. Christ was spending a lot of time with them mm -hmm. and it was becoming a little annoying to the disciples. They were getting a little bit perturbed that, the, that Jesus was spending so much time with these little children, that he's spending all this effort, mm -hmm. pretty much like what the devil does to us today. Yeah. He is annoyed because we are in the presence of God. He gets annoyed when we go to pray. He gets annoyed when we try to seek for God. He gets annoyed when we try to learn of God, and he tries to push us away and say, you don't need to do all that. Yeah. He tries to tell us that you're not worthy anyway. Remember what you did last week. Remember what you said last week to that brother, to that sister. You don't deserve to be in the presence of God. But Jesus has come to tell us that, yes, he has died for us. He loved us so much to bring us closer, to learn of him, to become his children. Yes. Consider for a moment the book of Mark, chapter number 10, 13 through 16. And it says, and they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said unto them, let the children come to me. Do not hinder them, for such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. Now what does this mean when we say receiving like a child? Are we talking about this, this innocence? Are we talking about this childlike nature? Well, we also have to consider that there's a flip side to that. Children also lie. Children are stubborn. Children, when you try to feed them something, they spit it out. When you try to discipline them, they run from you. 
They do all kinds of things. They destroy things. When it's nap time, they don't want to go to sleep. They always question you. They always want to know why. So I mean, so when we look at the side of the child, are we looking at the one side or are we considering the other? When Jesus was, uh, when they were offered, uh, arguing with Jesus over who was to be greatest in heaven, Jesus wasn't really just talking about you're acting like a child. He's becoming, he was talking about the humility, the position that you must take. The childlike position is what he's looking for. Being humble for what God has done for you. Being humble in the sight of the Lord and let him lift you up. Now, let's look also at this verse where child, uh, Paul talks about the childishness. The childishness of Paul that he's speaking of displays childishness in your spiritual growth, your talk, your actions, your speech, your understanding. When you first believe, are you still acting in that childlike form when you were first saved? As we go into the background of this letter, we talk about how Paul has formed this church by just meeting with a couple of people. They talked about God. He spread the gospel. Others heard it. They became saved. They spread the gospel. And next thing you know, the church of Corinth was formed. They were doing well while Paul was in his presence. But as soon as he left, then everything went south. They started to become immoral. They started to do things that were unlike a child of God. They were acting arrogant. They were not acting like the Christians that God has called them to be. They were not acting like the saved people that God has pulled them out of. This church became so immoral that the people that were around them were showing more morals than the people in the church. I know we don't see that today. But that's the same thing that's going on right now. How many of us have gotten so high and mighty in our salvation that we look down on others and don't consider that if it had not been for God, there go I. Right. Amen. Paul pointed out, no matter what gifts you have, as long as you're not showing charity, it means nothing. Yeah. They showed a lack of maturity in this thing. Mm -hmm. Now let's look at this following verse for the three areas that Paul is touching upon. In verse uh, number 11, he says, when I was a child, he says, one, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away these childish things. Here we're talking about the three spiritual phases of manhood. Now, ladies, I want you to understand, when we're talking about man, we're talking about mankind, not just picking on the brothers, but we're talking about the women as well. It's just a little bit easier to say mankind, okay? So, but the problem here is, Jesus said, unless you become like children, you can't enter into the kingdom, right? But Paul is saying, put away childish things. So what's going on here? Is there a contradiction? No. There is no contradiction in the Bible. When something seems unclear, it's up to us to find out what is being said here. So Paul addresses, first of all, in speech. He says that when he was a child, he spake as a child. Now you think back to when you were a child and how certain things that you said were incomprehensible. No one really could understand what some of the three, four-year-olds are saying, right? But as a matter of fact, it's just gibberish, honestly. Sometimes even the mother has a hard time understanding it, but they have kind of an idea of what they're trying to say. So what Paul is trying to say here is that that limitation of our vocabulary, that limitation of our communication, and I even want to go a step further in not only what we said to people, but how we said That's things good. to people That's needs to be That's matured. Good. That's good. Don't be so quick to tell people all of your business. Don't be so quick to gossip to others about things that are going on in other people's lives. Don't be so quick to tell everyone but God about your problems. Maturity of speech means spending more time speaking to God. That means increasing your prayer life upgrading the quality of your prayer life. How many prayers have we gone to, uh, gone through where everyone's talking about, Lord, bless me, bless mine, bless this, that I have, mm -hmm. and I'm not looking into or considering others. Yeah. Mature your prayer life. Don't let it always be about you. This is all about Christ. This is all about his kingdom and his people. Yeah. Mature your speech. Go to Bible study. Learn. Listen. Read the Bible. Don't spend two or three minutes in the Bible. It's insulting for you to say you're a Christian, but you don't read the word of God. Amen? Understand as a child. Meaning in this childish state, your understanding was limited to just your experiences at the time. You knew as a child about how certain things were. You knew about a phone. You knew about a car. But you didn't know what made it work. You didn't know what the, what the engine was. You didn't know about gas. and You didn't know about any of those things that it took to get a car moving. Some of the things that we were not 
shown was actually for our own good. Some of the things that we were hidden or covered from was because we were not mature enough at the time to understand what they really mean. That's right. So it, it forced us, rather, to focus and trust on God. Yeah. Trust that what he's doing is right. That's right. Now, he says, thought of reason as a child. This is based on your present reasoning level. Yeah. Kids don't understand why they must do certain things. Why must I go to church? Why must I go to school? Why must I do this? Who is God? Who is he? Why doesn't he answer me sometimes when I pray to him? Children tend to want to do things that require the least amount of work and effort. Yes. They tend to want to do things also that are impressive. Yeah. They want to do things that, you know, show that they're cool, they're bad, they're big, they're bad, <laughs> this, all, all this. But we have to get out of that phase right. that right. we're doing things for other people. And doing, get to the point we're doing things for God. Yeah. Remember, this chapter is based on love. And all things that the Corinthians would do amounted to nothing because no love was behind it. That's right. Paul, Paul stated clearly that when he was a child, he did the same thing. In his Christian walk, he made mistakes. Yeah. In his speech and his understanding. But he actively put those childish things away. When I say active, I mean you have to actually take a step yes. to do what is yes. right. I'm speaking to the young as well as the old, the ones that are acting like teenagers or like children, not wanting to get out of that past situation that you were in, not wanting to take responsibility for where you are today, moving forward, letting God know that, Lord, I am ready to grow up. Are you still acting like children, hearing the message being preached, but still wanting to do your own thing? For your own sake, for your family's sake, I need you to grow up. You children, need to see, or your children rather, need to see a mature growing up so they can understand the pattern and what it means and how it means to be mature. That's right. That's right. So as I charge you today to look at the current state of your life, I encourage you to grow up. Revisit the thing of value in your life. Thank God for not only letting you lay down, but also allowing you to wake up. You didn't wake yourself up on your own this morning. Give, you wake thank God for giving you a reasonable portion of health and strength. Some of the things that I valued at 25, I do value, I value better now at 50. Not just the car that I had, but being able to get out and walk. Not just the bed that I was sleeping in, but being able to get up on my own two legs. Not only being in a sound state of mind, but not being crazy because of all the things that I've gone through. If you're a mature saint, tell somebody. Young people need to know that God is a healer because they're still going through some things right now. They need to know that God is a heart fixer because some of them are going through heartbreaks right now. They need to know that God can be their best friend, that God is a mind regulator because there are some things out there that they haven't gone through that will make them almost go crazy. I thank God for all the trials and tests that I've gone through. So the next time that you have that praise in your heart, the next time that you're in church and you want to stand up and give praise, and that brother or that sister gives you that side eye, you just let them know, I am going to praise God and thank God for what he's did. Because if it wasn't for God, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Amen. Amen, amen, what a word we just heard from the elder. If you are looking to learn more about God, come visit us. Information can be found at our website, hodchurch.com. If you would like someone to talk to or in need of prayer, please call 1-800-741-SOUL or 1-800-741-7685. We look forward to seeing you next week for another inspired message and messenger. Until then, don't forget, your soul matters. Amen.